And now I would like to introduce our guest speaker this afternoon. Joe is the general manager for the Feeders Associations of Alberta, and he'll be talking about the Feeder Loan Guarantee Program. Joe, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Ashley. And thank you for all those participating today. Uh, very much appreciate taking the time to uh, share with you a bit of our the feeder guarantee program. Uh, to start with, uh, I'll start with uh, what who the feeder association is. Um, the feeder associations of Alberta ha was established as a not for profit uh, member owned cooperative established in May 1975. There are currently 45 local feeder co-ops across the province. Um, there are they and each local uh, feeder association is a member of the or member owner of the Feeders Association of Alberta, our provincial office. The Feeders Association is an umbrella organization of, of the for the 45 local co-ops from across Alberta and is the government's key partner in delivering the Feeder Association Loan Guarantee Program. And the Loan Guarantee Program was first established in 19, September 1936 to provide feeder cattle and feeder lamb financing in Alberta only. So there is a government guarantee uh, that's attached to the Feeder Loan Program. And as a result, uh, that is why it's an Alberta based only. Uh, as you can see, the program's in, in existence in excess of 80 years. So it's been a well-established program and has sure um, has been a, a starting block for many producers uh, who have you know, now matured to near retirement age. So uh, it's, it's benefited a lot of producers in the province. FAA is a, is a key role in creating and maintaining partnerships also with, with the government and lenders and other, other industry stakeholders like Alberta land producers. And the provincial office is located in Barhead. So the specific roles related to the FAA uh, is establishing a vision and direction for the future, assisting the development of the program policies and procedures. So we work with our provincial supervisor and the government uh, government directly in terms of any policy or procedural changes that we see of benefit uh, to the program as a whole and for our producers in delivering the program. Communicating, uh, another one is a role is communicating with our local feeder associations on any, um, any major news item or any happenings that are going on in our organization. Uh, another one is, as we are doing here today, is liaising with other livestock industry organizations to promote and, and market the feeder loan guarantee program. In a lot of cases, um, I, I know even in our local community, our uh, office, we just relocated approximately five years ago. So, but a lot of our producers, a lot of producers did not know who we are. And it, it's been a well kept secret seems like in some cases of who the Feeders Association is. And it wasn't until we really relocated our office here in our community Barhead that a lot of producers said, oh, we didn't know you existed. So um, that's one of the things that um, our Feeders Associations uh, really do, the local feeder associations, they don't do a lot of marketing. They generally, um, they generally promote the program through word of mouth or in, as they know people in the communities. That, that is one of our key functions here in our office is to help promote those programs. Um, at the end of the day, however, our local associations do make decisions as to the, who, who joins their, their local association. We'll move to the next slide. The, the province itself is divided into five zones and, and the provincial FAA board includes five directors, uh, one from each of the five zones. 
each of the director, each director is represented and voted on from each of their own zone. And they are elected for a term, for a maximum term of two, three year terms. Each year annually, we, from those five directors, uh, a chair and a vice chair is elected. And as well, annually, our office, uh, we organize and we hold our convention in AGM in Red Deer. And it's generally the first weekend of February each year. Unfortunately, our AGM this year was scheduled for February 6th, but it looks like uh, that is going to be postponed uh, till possibly later into March. Um, FAA also owns two wholly owned for profit entities the Alberta Breeder Finance Program, Inc., which we call ABFI, and the Western Cash Advance Program, Inc., which we call WECAP. Next slide. To give you an idea of the, the, um, the local associations across the province, uh, they're split into each of the five zones. There's the map there. Uh, our representatives from each of the zones, uh, for zone one, which is the southern part of the province, is Philip Lammerding. Uh, he's our, also our chair of FAA. Uh, Philip uh, is part of the Picture Butte Feeder Co-op. Uh, they're one of our largest feeder co-ops in our organization. Zone two is uh, Ernie Goble. Ernie is located out of uh, Strathmore and he's our zone two director. Reg Smith, Schmidt, he's our zone three director and he's in the, um, the Thorsby, Thorsby area. Uh, zone four is represented by Ken Stanley. Uh, Ken Stanley is from Westlock and also part of Jubilee Feedlot. And zone five, Linda Miller, who's also our vice chair. And Linda Miller is also the administrator for our St. Paul Feeders Co-op. So that gives you a little bit of a representation of uh, who, our, who our directors are and uh, uh, some of our local associations across the province that may be closest to you. Then we get into our staff. There's myself, the general manager. Um, I've been now with the organization since June of 2015. Um, and previous background, born and raised on a farm, uh, been in a banker, an ex-banker for the, for 30 years. So I come with a little, little bit of both financial and agricultural background. So that helps connect and understand uh, what farmers and producers are, are dealing with. Our financial controller and HR person here is Greg Atabo. Uh, program support is Caitlin Ellis. Um, Caitlin uh, primarily focuses on our the advanced payments program and interest rebate as part of the Western Cash Advance program. And then program support is Shelby Tui. And Shel Shelby is primarily looks after our breeder finance program or our ABFI program. Then we have uh, an accountant. Our accountant is Leo Liu. Uh, accounting assistant Kay Roberts, and then we currently have an assistant uh, accounting assistant position that's currently vacant and uh, in the process of filling that. So the province, the provincial office provides support services, uh, not only to the existing programs that we offer and administer out of our office, but we su pro provide support service and ancillary services to our local feeder co-ops across the province. We, uh, we do PPSA searches, uh, our personal property registry searches, try not to use acronyms. Uh, we do credit bureau reports. We do a, a number of different things um, in support to our local associations. And one of the, one big item is of course, uh, organizing and, and uh, putting on the annual convention in AGM in red deer. So talking about each of the local feeder co-ops, uh, 
each of the local feeder associations, and we call them LFAs. So if using the acronym, uh, you understand what it means is local feeder associations. Uh, and they are governed by a board of generally six to 10 members made up of local farmers from the local area. Each of the LFAs hires an administrator to administer the loan lending, uh, financial record keeping, and reports to the local board and, and to the provincial supervisor. Then there's also a supervisor that's hired and they complete inspections. They do the brand, brand and in the case of the lambs, ear tag inspections on animals bought and sold. They will inspect, uh, you know, feed stocks to ensure that you have sufficient support to uh, maintain the care and, and maintain the animals. Uh, view livestock facilities to ensure that you have adequacy for keeping uh, your animals as well. And they will do any inspections on any dead reports. So one of the requirements are is that you have to report any deads within a 24 hour period um, just be just because it's part of the inventory there is a need to report those items so the local feeder association operates independently of each other and independently from our provincial organization each one of those associations will negotiate their own financing with their own lender and their own relationship locally with with their lender um, so and each of the each of the local associations make the decisions uh, as to who borrows and they will review uh, determine the credit worthiness of the uh, the member who is applying uh, determine through the supervisor their management possibly financial strength and the amount and the amount of all, so the borrowed funds is determined in, and approved by the local board. Maximum borrowings per member is $2 million per individual and $3 million for a corporate entity or uh, cooperative or joint venture, subject to the local feeder board approval. So although there is the maximum limits that are set out, each local association may have their own limits that they will, they are comfortable in approving to individual borrowers or producers. And as I mentioned earlier, each of the local uh, LFAs negotiate their own financing arrangement with their financial institution of choice. Generally, we'll see the interest rates uh, that are charged on uh, feeder financing. Loans are primarily anywhere from prime interest rate as low as prime minus uh, a half. So today, the current environment prime interest rate is 2.45%. So we see uh, some feeder associations, depending on their size, uh, will be able to offer financing rates for feeder lamb or uh, cattle at prime rate, which 2.45 and, and as low, depending on the size of the association, as I mentioned, down to approximately the 2%. So there is some significant benefits to becoming a feeder member um, by benefiting from uh, the low interest rate. Becoming a feeder member, you must be a, an individual who is at least 18 years of age or older and is an active uh, shareholder, shareholder a partnership or a joint venture that owns or leases a farm in Alberta. The corporation and partnership or a joint venture must also be registered if you're a member of a corporation partnership or joint venture, must be also registered in Alberta to operate. A feeder member shall not be a member of more than one feeder association at one time unless authorized in writing by the provincial supervisor. So earlier I did mention that there was a, um, there's a relationship and a reporting between the associations and, and uh, our provincial 
uh, the government. There is a provincial supervisor that over oversees the whole program. And under this provincial supervisor, there are also regional uh, supervisors or inspectors of the government. So they will annually go to local feeders associations to ensure that their paperwork and their um, their processes are in place and are, they're in compliance with the government program. And this is where the local associations, generally the administrator will send in directly reports on a monthly basis to the provincial supervisor. So membership in a local feeder association is a privilege, not a right. So uh, boards can reject applicants without having to provide a reason. And uh, so a lot of the benefits of uh, why the local associations are so successful. There's a bit of the peer pressure, or not pressure, but the peer local uh, oversight that's provided. Uh, they, they generally know the local uh, producers. They understand how they operate and how they manage their operations. So there is a local oversight that, uh, that is in place that helps makes makes the program a stronger program. Next slide. So member benefits, as I mentioned, uh, the program offers some of the most competitive and lowest finance rates for feeder financing. Uh, financing is generally at 100% of the value of the feeder animals, cattle or lambs. And uh, in addition to that, uh, each feeder member is required to have a 5% security deposit. And that 5% security deposit is a, in a pool deposit. And what we mean by a pool deposit, if there is a producer that defaults on their loan um, and the, whatever animals are outstanding on the contract, those animals are sold. And if there's a def deficiency to cover the outstanding loan, the security deposit of the producer is used to uh, be applied against the loan. And if there is still a shortfall, the shortfall of that money will come from other producer security deposits. So that's what a pool security deposit means. And that also provides a value and a strength of the program because there, there's no producer that wants to sort of let their, their um, neighbor down. So there's a, a little bit of a inclination to ensure that you, you, you uh, take care of your own business. Program requirements, animals purchased and sold under the program are made in the name of the local feeder association on the account of the producer and must be recorded as such on the bill of sale or the livestock manifest. Uh, feeder cattle must be branded with an LFA brand. And in the case of lambs, they're ear tagged with a local association brand on the tag and the producer, or the, sorry, the, the LFA um, uh, name or abbreviation. Contracts are for a maximum of one year term and, and you, can't, you can't have more than four contracts going on at one time. So, uh, and if you do have multiple contracts, then you have to identify your animals in a certain way. Animals are, that are fed or maintained in a custom feedlot or at a third party location must, be, must have a signed custom feedlot agreement signed in place. Uh, prior to the animals being delivered to the, that location. So it's, uh, it, what it does do is just cover off just in, in case that there's, you know, if there is a feeding agreement, making sure that the bills are maintained, the feed bills are maintained on a regular basis, et cetera. So it's just to provide that communication tool so that everybody understands the terms of, of the agreement. Uh, next page. Well, it really comes to the end of the end of really what the feeder guarantee program is about. 
Uh, if there's more specifics, um, there is our website uh, at www.feederassociation.com. Uh, we do have our email, uh, email uh, our general in, uh, email is the info at feederassociation.com, or we have for each of our other programs, uh, abfi at feederassociation.com and uh, wecap at feederassociation.com. Our office here is located, our physical office location, and our mailing address is there, and our contact information is there. And so I think before um, I sort of end the rest of the presentation, I'd want to throw that out to the attendees if there's any questions or anything specific that you might want to ask. You can send questions in the chat function, or I see um, it's a more um, intimate group that's on this webinar this afternoon. So if you would like to unmute yourself and ask Joe the question that way instead, um, that's okay as well. I might add, uh, if we go back to our um, our map of the province, just for a brief second there, Ashley, we you will note that in the northern part of the province, I know we've been getting a fair amount of phone calls from uh, the Lacrete area up in that area. And unfortunately, we don't have a feeder association up in that area. There are certain pockets in the province that um, some of our local feeders won't go out too far from their area uh, just because they're, they don't feel comfortable in feeling that they are adequately able to uh, have a good tabs on and, and have a good tabs on what's going on and they limit themselves as to how far they go out. So you might have, you might, there might be in some cases, not really sure why if you go to talk to an association and say, well, I'm, I'm only this far out. Uh, they, it, unfortunately, we aren't able to make, uh, make the associations um, do business with you. So they have to be comfortable in being able to service their clientele. Uh, so there are pockets in the province that may, because of due to distance, um, aren't served as best as we would like. I should mention, um, how do some of these associations operate? How do they uh, maintain viability? And that's one thing I did not mention in here. Uh, there are local associations, uh, between associations, there are some variance in the fees that they set. Uh, each member pays a membership fee, obviously, to become a member. Uh, so you have the ability to vote uh, in your, what happens in your local association. Um, in addition to that, each of the contracts that you have, uh, each of the contracts that you have, um, there are some fees that are attached to pay cover off the administration and also uh, supervision fees as well. I uh, see Joe, that. I think there's questions. Are you able see. to see them as well? Yes, I am. So the first one, um, I see a question. Does the dollars paid by the feeder association include feeder lambs, drugs, and other costs? Generally, yes, they do. Uh, there is a, your basic, um, I think there's up to a, a, what it is up to a $35 per head for covering um, initial vaccinations and that kind of thing. Um, some of your, uh, your, your, your auction mart fees, your shoot fees, or, or those kinds of fees, commissions and things like that are covered off in the, uh, what's saying the 100% cost of the feeder lamb. So yes, 
there are some costs that are covered off. One thing that is not covered in the cost is any trucking. That is expected to be a, a, a cost borne by the producer itself. Another question there I see, um, if I'm already involved in a, in a contract for feeder cattle, and I want to begin a new contract to purchase feeder lambs with the same local association. Are there any issues or complications in doing so? No, there isn't. You can definitely do so. The only difference is, is some of our local associations are not comfortable in doing inspections on lambs or sheep in general. They just don't, are not knowledgeable enough about them. However, I think that is something that over time, and I, I, we are seeing a larger demand for feeder lamb financing and in general sheep breeding stock financing across the province. And we're seeing more associations warming, warming up, if you want to call it, uh, to, the, uh, to uh, getting a better understanding of what's involved with uh, uh, what does what do I need to look at in what's a, a sheep look like or what do I have to look for and we do have some uh, some links and some information that we have passed on to our local associations but again it's up to each local association to make that determination as to whether they're gonna be able to support the local uh, financing sheep or lambs or not. Uh, so it's each individual association makes that decision. I have another question there showing up. Does the local supervisor come out to count lambs prior to being paid? Um, the requirement is, is in order to pay, uh, if, if there's a, uh, a producer becomes a member and uh, is prepared to, is now approved to to start a new contract, uh, that the requirement of tagging uh, the lambs prior to paint, paint making payment is a requirement that must be done. Uh, so there, there is there is a there is a requirement for. Sorry, got my phone on here. Uh, there is a requirement for the lambs to be inspected to ensure that they are tagged um, prior to being paid. Yes. Another question is, are those tags that you mentioned available from the local feeder association? Yes, those tags are that might be at an additional, usually is at a, at, a, at a cost. And I believe those tags are usually either they're paid by the producer or I think they may be also uh, added into the contract, but usually the, the cost of the tag is fairly insignificant. So generally, we generally see producers are paying for those uh, tags up front. So the, yes, the local feeder associations do supply tags for feeder lamb financing. May I ask a question? Yes. Is there a size limit for the lambs uh, as to how many to actually uh, have a loan? Uh, yeah, you know, again, I would have to say thank you for that question. Um, the there there is in some cases uh some minimums that some associations do put on um but uh and i would have to say that that is possibly one of the reasons why some of the associations maybe don't uh support um as much maybe the feeder lamb financing because the cost involved involved in the administration but what we try to tell our associations is uh, you know give the producer that option or that you know to determine whether that cost is acceptable or not 
because we do know a lot of people, if it's remote or what have you, is just the access to cash. Uh, sometimes to be able to access some feeder, or some financing to grow the operations, um, you know, you might be prepared to pay a little extra in administration fees or uh, maintenance costs just to be able to access the program. So. Um, Yes, uh, some associations will have a minimum uh, just because of that. Uh, that's a policy that they have, or uh, they may say they may have uh, request an additional fee, but that generally is left with each of the local associations to make that decision. Thank you. You're welcome. There was one more question that came through, Joe. Um, okay. Function. Um, do they have uh, Do they have the local feeder brand on the tag, or just the Alberta breed, uh, Alberta feeder brand? No, there would be the the tag would include the the local feeder brand as well as the name of the association. So. I'm gonna say, because um, because the uh, per, the local association that does quite a bit of our la uh, lamb feeder financing is Acme. They will have Acme on their on the tag, but in addition to that, they will have the the brand identifier uh, also embossed on the tag. So. The in, in particular, the ACME is Y over, over split end bar. So, um, so there will be uh, that as embossed on the tag. If there's no other questions, I do want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your day to learn a little bit more about the Feeders Association of Alberta and some of our other programs. We are going to be uh, hosting a couple of others in the next over the next day or two days. So uh, we do want to thank you for uh, tuning in and and um, being part of the presentations. We do want to thank uh, Alberta Lamb Producers to taking uh, making this happen, Ashley, for your time and coordinating and allowing a uh, you know to put on the event and and making this happen and sharing with our producers. So I do want to thank Alberta Lamb and Ashley for for making this happen. And I would also like to thank you, Joe, um, and the association for being willing to. Um, to help educate our producers on uh, the various programs um, that are offered. Um, and so just so everybody else knows who's on this call, um, I will be sending an email out that'll have this, um, a copy of the presentation, just in case um, you needed to refer back to anything or if you didn't jot down any of the contact information should you want to reach back out to Joe or a member of his team. Um, so without any other questions, um, this will conclude our webinar this afternoon. Again, thank you everyone for joining us and hopefully we'll see you uh, tomorrow or Friday uh, virtually for the WeCAF and ABFI webinars. Thank you.